Now, uh, PAPA is, uh, is known uh, for uh, very many programs, but the key among them are the internship program where uh, literally hundreds of people have gone through and learned leadership skills. And of course, a symposium like this would not be possible without hearing from those interns. And to uh, have a conversation with them is uh, Ted Fong, who wears very many hats, including the producer of this symposium, as well as the technical director. So, uh, Ted? Thank you, Lonnie. This has been a really wonderful experience for all the students who participated. We had about 10 or 12 students submit essays for the symposium, and they are linked to our landing page at apapa.org slash future. Uh, two of them in particular are from the Albany chapter. That group alone submitted six essays, and we select um, them to be on the program a little bit later. But for now, we're going to highlight the ones that came from the Solano <coughs> chapter of Apapa. Uh, joining me is um, Malia Samante. And also, Hello. Dylan O'Connor. Hi, everybody. There we go. Sorry about that. Great. Hey, good to see you guys. Um, so I've talked to you before about your writing, and a lot of things that go into the essay really reflect uh, what you are thinking and, and hoping for uh, the young generation to consider as they become, um, how should we say, involved in uh, elected politics and civic affairs. So tell us what you're studying at uh, Cal Poly Pomona, and tell us what you have written about for the symposium. Okay, um, I'm actually attending Cal Poly San Luis Obispo and I'm studying business administration with a concentration in information systems and I wrote for the symposium an article surrounding inclusive leadership in the midst of COVID-19 and how it's important to uplift our communities. Great. Now when you uh, wrote this um, essay, is there any personal experience that kind of gave you the impetus for covering what you did? and? You know, what is it about inclusiveness that is so important to us? Most definitely. Um, I grew up as a, a military, as a part of a military family. And so sometimes I felt like I didn't belong in the communities I lived in. And so that personal experience has made me have a passion for helping people feel like they belong in our community. Um, and so inclusive leadership is important because it helps create a society where people feel like they belong. And inclusive leadership is really about accepting diversity everywhere, in your workplace, in your school, and in your government. And what kind of future do you see for yourself as, a, as an advocate for inclusiveness, and especially if you plan to go into leadership? What's in your future? Well, as I said before, I do have a passion for helping people feel like they have a purpose. Um, and so, one goal that I'd like to accomplish is starting my own nonprofit or creating a program for a nonprofit that supports children in disadvantaged communities as they're moving up in education. And this program would provide classes or experiences that children can take and experiment with to find what they're passionate about, whether it's healthcare, it's teaching, computers, business. And this would be for children who don't have the access to the best education systems. And so I know myself and many of my peers entered college not knowing exactly what we wanted to do. And so that answer really comes from trying different things and learning what you like. And people feel like they belong when they're confident in the things that they're doing and confident in what they want to do in a career. Great. Well, good luck to you at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. I should know that because my son went to school there. So <laughs> moving to you, Dylan, um, thank you for joining us. You are at UC Davis as a pre-med, um, and the central theme of your article is uh, diversity or the lack thereof as a big reason why there are disparities in healthcare. Can you explain that premise? Yes, so the issue is the lack of a policy that addresses the health disparities we see between minority and white patients, which stem from a lack of diversity within our healthcare. For instance, the HHS Office of Minority Health published the class standards, which encourages healthcare providers to implement a variety of guidelines, which include diversity training courses. And the keyword is encourage, it is not mandated. So even, so even when most of these hospitals include these type of trainings, these trainings only last a few days, a week, maybe two, which is definitely not enough time for proper training. Without a proper policy mandating continuous ethnic and diversity training, the, the care differential amongst Black, Indigenous, and people of color will remain stagnant and underserved. So um, if you're a doctor, um, it's pretty hard to get into med school. 
but yet you're saying that doctors should have a very strong uh, social conscience and be able to uh, communicate upwards and go into politics, maybe go into advocacy. Aren't those kind of two different mindsets? Yes, you know, I do not think it is not reasonable to go into medicine and policy. I actually believe more healthcare workers, such as physicians, should be involved in policy because those same policies govern the way they function and how the hospital functions. And yes, it does require a different mindset to an extent, but is but it is imperative and essential for healthcare workers to be involved with policy and moreover policy making to better address the needs of patients of varying socioeconomic backgrounds. So last question, um, say, you know, 20 years from now or less, if you were the Secretary of Health and Human Services, what is it that you would want to do for the country that is different than what is being done today? So if I was a leader in policy making in the Department of Health and Human Services, I would address the diversity issue in three ways. First, I would provide better access to opportunity and education to healthcare workers. Secondly, I would mandate a policy requiring continuous diversity and ethnic training in healthcare. And lastly, I would constantly educate myself and others on these issues. Many individuals don't know about these issues that affect them because they aren't aware of it. And so it is imperative of us to raise awareness of these issues. And we see that true today in many campaigns and movements such as Black Lives Matter. And as Maya Angelou best puts it, diversity makes for a rich tapestry. And it is important that we understand that each thread of the tapestry is equal in value, no matter their color, which is the overarching theme that I convey within my entire article. Great. Well, Dylan and Malia, I want to thank you for being such an inspiration to myself and all the people out there who are going to read your essays and to all the other folks who um, contributed to this project. I want to thank you. So good luck in all your studies on the road ahead. And now over to Pamela. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, everybody. You for having us.